Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan. I just thought I'd show myself in person for a few seconds before switching to the PowerPoint. So in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to tell you as much as I can about cluster headaches and about the project we have to help patients achieve pain relief. Now this is one of many drawings you can find where cluster headache patients try to basically put into images what the pain is actually like. Here's another one. It's basically hell. And um, Ashley Haddle, who suffers from cluster headaches and wrote a book about how to survive them, wrote, the pain is so shocking, there's no way anything else in life could feel worse than that. This is the feeling of death, only you don't die. And in the Darren Aronofsky film, Pi, the lead character, Max Cohen, is a mathematician who suffers from cluster headaches. And this is a theme throughout the movie. And patients with cluster headaches have told me that the film very realistically depicts the experience of having cluster headaches. Now I'm going to go through a couple of key facts about cluster headaches. They're also known as Horton syphilalgia, that's the medical term, or uh, informally as suicide headaches for obvious reasons. And it's been compared, for example, to having a red-hot ice pick driven through an eye into the brain. It's one of the most excruciating pains known to medicine. Uh, women who've given birth have said that it's far worse than childbirth. It's worse than kidney stones. It's worse than migraines. Um, this chart, which was uh, based on a survey performed by Larry Shore, shows that cluster headaches are way up there. They're, they average around 9.7 on a scale of, of uh, 1 to 10. Um, two and a half points above childbirth and uh, well beyond pancreatitis and other sources of intense suffering. So they're always unilateral, centered on or around the eye. And attacks typically last around an hour. Uh, they can be as short as about 15 minutes, and they can also last as long as three hours or even longer. And they occur um, from once every couple of days to several times a day, uh, even as many as eight times a day or more. And patients are often woken up several times during the night by attacks. So you can imagine just how agonizing and disruptive uh, it is to have cluster headaches. Patients go to extremes to distract themselves from the pain, uh, like banging their head against the wall or punching their head. Um, now, cluster headaches can be divided into two categories. So about 85% of patients have episodic clusters, and these last about one to three months and occur once or twice a year, often at the same time of year. The other 15% of cluster headache, patient, uh, cl headache patients have what are called chronic clusters, and these can last for years with multiple attacks every single day. Now, cluster headaches affect about 0.1% of the total population. The exact frequency or prevalence isn't uh, known. Um, but this would indicate that about 8 million people suffer from clus cluster headaches globally. And the exact suicide rate uh, isn't known, but it's been estimated to be as much as 20 times the average. And cluster headaches can take years to be properly diagnosed. Now I'm going to show you a video here of a Canadian man who posted a video of himself uh, experiencing um, a cluster headache in order to show people what it's actually like. Just a warning, this is quite difficult to watch. I'm about an hour into my attack, and it's getting worse. I just wanted people to see uh, what we go through. So maybe some people would understand. And 
And I'm going to show you one more video here of a Norwegian woman who is actually a scientist. And you're going to see here that her partner is trying to help her. And um, she's also inhaling oxygen at the same time. Oxygen is actually a very effective abortive. Um, but it, obviously at this point in her attack, it hasn't kicked in yet. So obviously very distressing to watch. Um, you can imagine what it's like for, for, uh, for a patient to experience that. Uh, so just to give you a few patient testimonials, the pain is indescribable hell. Uh, I'm so scared I can't stop crying. Today is one of those days I wonder why I pushed through. I don't know how to deal with this day in and day out, wave after wave of attacks. During some of the attacks I get so desperate to make it stop that I wish I could just not exist. The insane pain just radiates through my brain. I don't know if I can live with this anymore. No pills work. It's the worst pain I ever had. If nothing helps, I don't think I can handle this for the rest of my life. Now, one of the challenges is how to actually measure the intensity of pain and suffering. Pain is typically rated on a scale of 0 to 10. And so there's a tendency, even among effective altruists, to uh, perform calculations uh, saying, for example, that a that a 10 out of 10 pain is just twice as bad as a 5 out of 10 pain. The problem is you can't do that kind of calculation with such a scale. These scales are ordinal. They tell you about relative positions, but they're not cardinal. They're not, these are not individual units of suffering that are being measured. Now, Andres Gomez Emilson addresses this question in another talk during this conference uh, about the logarithmic um, uh, scale of pain and pleasure. Uh, I think what we all agree is that you certainly cannot treat a 10 out of 10 pain as simply twice a 5 out of 10 pain. It's an entirely different animal, uh, and it's qualitatively entirely different. Okay, maybe a, a better way of depicting it would be on a scale that doesn't even have numbers. It just has uh, faces that show um, increasing amounts of distress. Now, there are several medications on the market that do work against cluster headaches to some extent. Uh, there's verapamil, which can work as a preventative. It can reduce the frequency and severity of, of attacks, but it's not very effective at entirely stopping episodes. And there are cardiovascular issues as well. Um, one of the standard abortives is sumatriptan, which is also used for migraines. Um, it can be very effective at aborting an attack very quickly. But there are, there are problems. There are cardiovascular issues which limit the number of times that can be used uh, per day, generally only about two times. So patients will wait for their worst attacks to actually use it. In addition, it can lead to rebound headaches. The effectiveness may wear off after, after a few years uh, of using it, and it doesn't work for everyone. High flow oxygen um, can be highly effective. Uh, it seems to work for probably around 70% or more of patients. There are no side effects. However, it can take around 10 to 15 minutes to work. It doesn't work for everyone, and it requires having an oxygen tank uh, at all times. Now, there are various other uh, medical and non-medical treatments. Um, there are antibody-based drugs that can reduce the attack uh, frequency. There are electrical stimulation devices that seem to help um, abort attacks in some patients, uh, but they're not always available through, uh, through um, healthcare. Uh, surgery, surgery is performed in, in very few cases. Patients find that high energy drinks containing taurine, if, if drunk very quickly at the onset, can reduce the severity of attacks. There are also high dose vitamin D regimens that have been found anecdotally to reduce the frequency of attacks. And then there are hyper, hyperventilation techniques and other approaches that patients use. Now, several years ago, probably a few decades ago by now, it was found that a number of chemicals that are chemically related and often have hallucinogenic properties 
um, can be very effective at avoiding and preventing attacks. And we're talking about psilocybin, LSD, um, DMT, which is the, um, uh, the active ingredient of ayahuasca, and another uh, chemical called 5 meodalt And one cluster headache patient uh, wrote in a forum recently, if you really want your life back, look into psychedelics. Mushrooms, LSD, and DMT. Mushrooms and LSD, if taken in the correct regimen, you can bust a cycle. And DMT will abort an attack in five seconds and back to sleep. Now, most of the evidence comes from uh, actual patient reports, uh, which would be considered anecdotal evidence. But these have been studied uh, academically. And this is a key figure from a paper that, uh, that uh, was written by Emanuel Schindler and colleagues in 2015. And what this shows is the degree of effectiveness at preventing attacks by various medications. And you can see here that psilocybin and LSD both um, are found to be completely effective in preventing attacks by uh, around 40% of patients that try them. So that, those are the dark purple bars uh, at the top. Um, an additional 30% of patients find them to be moderately effective, and then around another 20% find them to be partially effective. Only about 10% of patients find them not to be effective at all. Compare that with verapamil um, on the far left side, which is found to be completely effective in probably only around less than 10% of patients. And uh, nearly 40% of, of patients find it to be not effective at all. So a few facts about psilocybin mushrooms for cluster headaches. It's found that often just a few doses, such as three in the space of 11 days, and sometimes just one single dose, can often prevent an entire cycle. That means uh, potentially several months of attacks can be, can be prevented. Um, in addition, people that have chronic cluster headaches may find that it, it actually stops them from having headaches altogether. And they're often effective even at sub hallucinogenic doses, so it doesn't mean going on a trip every time you uh, self-medicate. It's known from recreational use of psilocybin mushrooms that they're quite safe, and a recent phase one trial showed that there were no serious adverse effects. And obviously they're inexpensive to produce, so they can just be grown, uh, well, people grow them themselves, and it wouldn't be very expensive to produce them uh, industrially. Uh, one cluster headache patient wrote that people don't talk about this enough. I busted last summer after my worst cycle ever and 15 years of suffering, and they haven't even had a twinge since. The family member uh, of another cluster headache sufferer wrote this. When my dad started begging me uh, for help with anything or he was going to shoot himself, I immediately got on this website and found mushrooms. I went to his home 86 miles away at 10 at night once I got them. He has not had one headache since. It is a lifesaver for him, microdosing. Months and months of begging and crying from a tough 79-year-old farmer. He is fine now. So one of the big problems with psilocybin mushrooms is the legal status. Now, they're not actually regulated by UN treaties, but it's, they're illegal to possess or cultivate in most countries. Uh, they're only fully legal in a few countries like Brazil, Jamaica, and the Netherlands in the form of truffles. Uh, grow kits are legal in Canada and in most US states, although not the actual cultivation. They've been decriminalized in a few countries like Italy and Portugal. Uh, in Spain, they've only been decriminalized for uh, possession and culture. And this just shows you uh, an excerpt from the Wikipedia page that shows you just in a sample of countries that they're basically illegal for, for all purposes. Uh, if we look at the, at the issue of uh, cluster headaches and using psilocybin uh, from an EA perspective, well, if we look at the scale, there are about 8 million people that suffer from cluster headaches. And if we got all of them to use psilocybin mushrooms, we could prevent probably around 40% uh, of their attacks. Uh, that is to say, 40% of them would, could have stopped all their attacks. So that's around 3 million people, maybe more. An additional 30% could stop many or most of their attacks. So that's another 2.4 million. Um, we're talking about wiping out the majority of cluster attacks experienced in the world and you know, dramatically transforming the life of millions of people. 
In terms of neglectedness, neglectedness, there are a few patient groups that are active, especially in the US, that policymaker, policymakers are still unaware of the problem. And even many, or even most, neurologists worldwide are unfamiliar with cluster headaches. In terms of tractability, well, the biggest problem is that drug policy is a sensitive issue in most countries. However, times are changing. And there, there are a lot of studies now uh, investigating psychedelics, not only psilocybin, but also LSD and MDMA, including for things like depression and post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. So um, there's, a, there's a real interest now in awareness of their therapeutic potential. Now, Opus's overall approach is to lobby progressive governments, such as in Finland, New Zealand, and Canada, to improve access and remove legal obstacles to the use of psychedelics for cluster headaches. And we want to use uh, any successes that we achieve to promote change in other countries. We want to improve awareness of cluster headaches um, and, and the symptoms and their treatment options among neurologists and GPs worldwide. And we want to provide information to patients in the form of a free online guidebook that includes comprehensive information uh, about cluster headaches and alternative treatments. Now, there are several challenges, and probably the biggest one is that there's still a stigma around psychedelics. That also means that, that many neurologists and politicians uh, would be afraid of damaging the reputation by speaking out in favor of them. Uh, there's pressure behind the scenes from pharma companies that sell expensive but less effective drugs for cluster headaches. There's currently a lack of randomized controlled trial data, although there, is a, uh, currently, uh, there are two current phase, uh, phase one trials um, looking at psilocybin for cluster headaches. There's the problem of the relative rarity of the condition, although there are other similarly pre prevalent diseases like multiple sclerosis that get far more funding. The name itself, cluster headaches, dramatically misrepresents the severity of the condition. And as I tried to indicate earlier, there's a lack of understanding of the significance of 10 out of 10 pain. Now we have an initiative in Finland uh, with several goals, the general goal is to bring to the government's attention the urgency of the issue. We want to ensure that high flow oxygen becomes standard abortive treatment prescribed by neurologists. We would like to recommend that the government legalize psilocybin for self-medication by cluster addict patients so that nobody who self-medicates uh, risks being treated as a criminal. And ideally we would like uh, it to be an option for neurologists to actually prescribe psilocybin um, as a potential treatment. Now, the advantages of focusing on Finland are that there is currently a young, progressive, female-led government uh, that we would hope might be more open to the issue of pain and its relief. Uh, Finland has uh, progressive policies in other areas, like education and prisons, that have received international attention. The Minister of Interior of Finland currently supports uh, drug decriminalization. And we've established a very close collaboration with the Finnish Patient Association. Uh, the biggest challenges are that there, the existing drug policies are strict and make little distinction based on harmfulness. And there's a, uh, perhaps a cultural tendency in Finland to avoid controversy. Our approach is to bring together a coalition of Finnish and international uh, neurologists, drug experts, and patient advocates, uh, and others. Uh, we're working on a, a policy paper that we will communicate widely to the government, the media, and, and to others. And we plan to engage with politicians and look for concrete solutions. And of course, if we achieve any successes, we will announce them and encourage other governments to adopt equally progressive policies. And you can find out more about cluster headaches and about what uh, we're doing in this area by going to this website. Thanks very much.